for the last hundred years, but it's still a Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Ten Forward Weekly. Uh, this might feel like uh, retread to you if you saw the stream, but we're doing a local video recording now, so we're gonna just record this and uh, pump it up on YouTube. Uh, I am joined today by uh, ship designer Donnie Versiga. Versiga? Ship artist. Ship yeah. artist. Yeah. Why did it say ship designer? I don't know. You did. I it. messed that up. <laughs> I think and I'm the Versaja. Ship it's pronounced Versaja. Versaja. Right? Oh, man, I messed everything up. That's fine. It's fine. It's not fine. My, He's my gonna carry a grudge mis for years. <laughs> uh, and uh, Jet Levens, who is our one of our systems designer, not our only systems designer. Thank God. <laughs> now I'm just imagining that horrible future where only Jet designs ships, and everything else. Only Jet so, designs ships right now. I mean, and everything else was the problem. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. So we're here today to look at the um, Section 31 battle cruiser, which Donnie built and Jet designed the stats for. So let's just dive right in and do that. And here she is. Let me turn this off. So, Donnie, talk a little bit about that. No. Donnie, talk a little bit about this ship. I, this is um, one of your, your cannon builds. So it's a ship that existed in Discovery. Um, uh, did, it did. It was in the background. Yeah. Uh, but we were lucky enough to get CBS to send us some uh, concept art for it. And uh, also uh, a nearly complete model of it. Um, mm. But did they not make a fully complete model of it because it was a background ship, or did they, they not have it said? It, it's hard to tell. We get models in various states of development sometimes when they do send us stuff, so we're lucky to get what we get. So, uh, But it was not complete with all the details. However, uh, the ship pretty much, uh, in, in, in CBS production terms, was a kit bash of the Scout the the, the uh, Secretary 1 Scout ship. Okay. So it has a lot of similarities. The nacelles and the struts and the... Um, and the bridge area were all pretty much the same, so just I didn't duplicated have to, a bit. Yeah, so I didn't have to uh, rebuild the nacelles. I just took them from what I already built of the scout ship. Um, the hull and the saucer were almost new, but this top portion of the where the oh, bridge yeah, I can is, see that. that is the old ship right then, there. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, it it wasn't. Uh, I mean, I still had to do a ton of work, um, and uh, you know, I. I I, I took a lot of the work that I did on the scout, as much as I could on the scout ship, to this, so that way it would it reduce the amount of time I had to spend on it. So, uh, but the the really challenging part was is is the uh, the saucer area with the with the fighter hangers on top, those little, those panels yeah, that, that come these, up. These each individually have to be a drone, yeah. Right. Uh, well, uh, not really, but we did magic to make it look as close as possible to, as if. <laughs> fighters are launching off the uh, so is this then a different material than the other section 31 ship to give that effect i see the little triangle yeah here. yeah yeah that that there's two materials on here and that one on the, sh the fighter pets cannot change because i would have had to make a new material for every every material we give this ship <laughs> yeah um, that's not gonna work and just the way that our, our some of our data setup goes uh we couldn't uh have vanity shields play on that area either i believe so okay uh, so if we put a vanity shield there. on the ship It'll hit this area and this area, but not this. Right. This will yeah, stay yeah, gray. Yeah. Um, that's kind of that's kind of a cool look, though. I, we did we had that with the um, the cleave, the Klingon ship, where it, the the blade always stayed the same color, and it actually ended up looking really cool with some stuff. I think one of the cool things about vanity shields on this is like there's actually the bars <coughs> in between where those panels are, and if you have the the um, the pink vanity shield mm -hmm. or the Lucari or the Aegis that have those like outlines that play on ships, they go over all of those little bars. Oh, that's really cool. cool. Yeah. That is super, super cool. We should pull up humanity ships on this, shields on this later and look for it. Um, so this, is a, this was a kit bash then, but it also was an incomplete model when you got it. So is any of this like your sort of filling in the gaps? Did you have to sort of design um, any part of this ship? Some of the, if you zoom in, uh, not on, like keep, keep going right where you are, just zoom in on that center area. Yeah. Uh, and I go up to the top of the saucer. So that you see those little panels that I've cut in yeah. everywhere? Mm -hmm. I had to pretty much guess on a lot of those because the model didn't have those panels in it. Uh, and I had a really low resolution orthographic screenshot of the ship. Mm -hmm. uh, so I had to pretty much just decide where I wanted those panels to go. When you say panels, do you mean the repeating square shapes or do you mean these two uh, like nubbies The repeating here? square shapes. So if you go on the underside, Move the camera around so you catch some of that light. 
you'll see there's raised panels there. That yeah. I, I, I cut those in uh, just pretty much on my own design because to follow kind of the, the, the same motif that the scout ship has. That's really so, cool. Um, and to not, I didn't want to add too many, so we went over our polygon budget. <laughs> but we are, I mean, we did anyway, so. Um, <laughs> what do you do when a ship goes over its polygon budget? Do you have to just, just take some polys out? You, you reduce it as much as you can. But, okay. All right, so for instance, the Section 31 scout ship hit our polygon budget, <coughs> but I had, to, I had to double the nacelles. So hmm. pretty much right there, that was like, that like tripled our polygon budget or whatever. <laughs> so, um, well not tripled, but almost doubled but, you it. Know. But uh, so I had to go through and just strategically reduce polygons in certain areas that don't really matter anyway, since you never really get that close up to the ship. Yeah. Um, it only matters in that else. we want it to look as cool as possible. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for those of you following along at home, the scout ship was released to players as a science destroyer. But that's, I guess, the, the model name for it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it was actually art, called. Artwise, it. It, it, it's called the scout ship in canon. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think it is a science destroyer, it. but I think we did call it a scout ship, like, and at least some blogs it's, and stuff. Yeah. Just yeah. For, for clarification, because scout is a different mechanical thing than what that ship was. He's that's not true. talking about some random unreleased ship that he's not. Supposed <laughs> to be about. He's talking about the Vulcan scout ship. It actually has uh, some very some very mm. aesthetic similarities here. You can't oh, you see them. So a lot of the times, uh, <laughs> the, the name that the, the that Jet gives the ships will end up being different than what we've called it internally. So especially when we've called it something internally for months and months and months, what, and it's, and when we've called it something stupid internally for months and months and months, I can't think of a good example off the top of my head now. But there's definitely ships that we've named well, like, you know, the Greeble or something for like instance, that. For instance, the the the, discovery, the, the discovery Area Constitution class is what is it called uh, in systems wise, Jet? <coughs> flight deck carrier right but in the show it's just a constitution class heavy cruiser yeah so that's what we called it internally until jet got made her hands it, on it made and, a ship that and, then, and then made it special the systems yeah. for it in our gamers yeah, yeah, yeah. So. that's really cool so what um so you, you're approaching the ship you have to take a ship you've already modeled and sort of remodel it based off of some sort of hazy things in an unfinished model. What's the, I've now used the word model four times in that sentence, my God. Uh, what's the like process like, you know, from you get the, the CBS shipment in, it's got all this stuff, and then you move to, you know, what this is the end point. What's the in-between like? I don't know. I usually just close my eyes and I wake up a couple days later mm. and it's done. That sounds right. Uh, no, that, that, um, mean, that means the drugs we give you are working. That, that's definitely how I felt on the Galaxy when I revamped the Galaxy not too long ago. I was like, <laughs> Thomas, I don't know how I did this. I just kind of closed my eyes and I woke up and it was <laughs> I just done. went into a fugue state. <laughs> but uh, So I, I took the model and imported it into the file uh, with the scout ship in it and then appropriately sized it in comparison to the scout ship. And then I took pieces of the scout ship and pretty much copy them over and then move them So this is position. working with the CBS, the model that CBS sent yeah, you? Yeah, but I had to dramatically reduce it because it was millions of polygons. Oh, sure. And, but, um, that's, that's a TV budget, son. Yeah, so, uh, and so I moved the pieces of the scout ship that I knew I wouldn't have to change over to lay over the, the uh, reference model that CBS gave me. And then once I did that, I deleted polygons that I needed to, and then extruded polygons outward from there. Okay. Until I got, uh, you know, and just kind of. So like originally, the, the the saucer was like part of this piece that you just kind of like dragged out of no, the shape. No, the saucer was new. The, the okay. saucer part was new, but like for instance, the the part behind the bridge. Yeah. Uh, I had to elongate. Uh, I pretty much just stretched out from what I already had it because it was like that on the, the uh, this long line here. The you reference. Mean? Yeah. Okay. So that's. That portion is considerably uh, not as long on the scout ship, but I just had to stretch it out. Um, and then, and then a lot of, the, I mean, like the underside of the hull and the, the flanges of the saucer were built from, built pretty much new. Uh, the deflector cover there, the deflector bay. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, actually that was ported over from the scout ship because it was the same, but the hull surrounding it was different. Okay. So I pretty much just copied over what I needed from the scout ship, deleted stuff that I didn't need, uh, and then built from there. That's neat. So like um, the little like, uh, I guess these are torpedo tubes here. Yeah. That's all stuff that's new. I'm always curious about this. How do you add decide where the windows go? Uh, I added, well, the, the, uh, the windows were not there on the CBS model. Right. So, uh, but they were there, they were present on a, a, 
a very low res orthographic uh, view of okay. the ship that I got, a concept art. So I just placed them according to that. Oh, neat. Okay. That's cool. Uh, is there anything else super cool about this ship we should be looking for? Um, Actually, I'm kind of curious. So this piece that's coming out here from in between the two nacelles, is that from the original scout ship? Yeah. So those fold up and cover those little green oh, waves neat. when you go into dark mode. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And then those those pieces that, that jut outward from the aft of the stanchions, uh -huh. those go in. How neat. Um, and how do you design like I know Weston does the quote unquote animating of this stuff, but how do you design parts? Is it, does it any different to design a part that needs to animate later? I what I usually do, what I did with the scout ship and this ship is that I did a very rough white box version with some basic animations in it and then save that off for him to use as reference. So like because I dissected the ship once I got it pretty much yeah. and I didn't want him to have to do that work because I would have to build it in a way that it animated. So yeah. I went ahead and just built, I'm not an animator, so I went ahead <laughs> and built in just what I could based on my limited animation skill and uh, showed him that. And then he took that and then made proper higher quality animations from those. Neat. That's really cool. Um, all right. And so a quick question about the material on this ship. The Section 31 ships, um, they are dark as heck. They are like designed to be like black against the black of right. space. Like a stealth bomber. Yeah, right, like, a, yeah. like a stealth bomber. And so, you know, like when we first, the first map we tried to put this on for a stream, it was just too dark. You could barely see the ship. Yeah. How do you design a ship to be like that kind of stealthy, but still be like playable in a player's hand and, and look like a ship you're flying and not just a bunch of lights floating in space. Yeah, uh, well, it's tough because a lot of our maps, our space maps, have been produced over 10 years and they've all been lit differently by different artists. So a lot of the times, a lot of something I struggle with, um, with getting materials to look right on any ship, is the fact that in one map the reflection might be overblown, yeah. uh, there might not be enough light, the map might be too dark. Um, so what I do is I usually use when I make a material for a ship, I am constantly checking, uh, just re-exporting textures and making little adjustments to my textures, re-importing them into the game uh, until I get something that looks right in one map. And then I'll go across three or four different maps that I usually go to that all kind of have different lighting situations, yeah. see how they look in there, make further tweaks, re-import my textures. It's it's a long process, and for it, sure it gets. I'm I'm learning. I'm actually working on a ship right now that I can't talk about, but uh, <laughs> I'm actually working now where I'm doing it early. That iterative process earlier on before I get too far in the material, so that way I can get my base values of how glossy the ship is, how metallic looking it is, what color it is. Uh, I'm getting that out of the way earlier this time instead of usually what I what I've done in the past is I will do a material over five days, get it in game, and then it looks nothing like I wanted it to based on our, how our yeah. maps are lit. Mm -hmm. And then I will have to spend another day or two tweaking um, the values from there. And that process always frustr frustrates me. So I'm being proactive this time and actually iterating from the get-go. Doing the tweaks while you're making yeah. material the first time. So that way I can at least have a base, like, okay, this looks good across these different maps. Now let me do all the details. That's really cool. So. Yeah. yeah, that's super neat. Um, all right, so we should pop this ship over to the test map to see how it performs in well, combat. But before we do that, let's show off the cool stuff. Yeah. Um, so sure. first of all, this is this is dark mode. Which, Jet, talk to us a little bit about what, what dark mode is. So dark mode is uh, largely an existing feature from the existing Section Thirty One ship. Um, visually, it adds, uh, it calls an animation on the ship. It plays the the dark mode effects, and all of the lights on the ship turn out which I didn't notice the first time I did it. And I was like, wow, that's cool. And that's that also really makes cool. a lot of sense. Um, it on this has... map, we'll, we'll try it again on the other the other map, because on this map it kind of just stays a little brown looking because of the sort of flatter lighting here. But It has a lot of mechanical similarities to a normal cloaking device where people can't... Uh, enemies have a really hard time seeing your ship while they're... Well, you're in this mode unless they're right on top of you or have really high perception values. Um, your shields are offline. When you leave it, you get a bonus to damage that lasts for a short while. Um, you have to be in it for five seconds to get the bonus? I, some number of seconds. I forget how many. <laughs> I think it was what? five last time we talked about this. Because I, I was popping in and out of cloak on stream and you were like, um, that's not helping you. <laughs> it's it's going to be more than half a second. Though. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then when you leave, of course, the ship will 
Re life back, back up. Into That's such so cool. And the uh, the just the effects that everybody worked put together to work on this ship. Uh, I know there was a ton of iteration on you know how to make this stuff work, especially this one, which is this just is the coolest thing ever. Epic. Yeah. Um, so this yeah, is swarm yeah, mode. This is uh, the ship. Uh, just like in the show, the ship's panels all become these little fighter drones uh, that then swarm around the ship. And Donnie, you modeled all these little drones as well, yeah? Those aren't actually models. Uh, those are flat cards. Um, uh, those are flat textures that look kind of three-dimensional in a way. Oh, neat. But we couldn't, we couldn't afford modeling all those ships. Yeah, your, your um, game would die. Because there's, I think, I don't know, like a thousand of them or something like that. But if we do launch the, uh, the pets, they will be... Um, they'll be the actual modeled versions, yeah? Yeah, the, the version with the Starship Trait grants are actual 3D models of the ship. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. This is from the Starship Trait and not from a hangar bay, that makes sense. Yeah, this ship doesn't have any hangar bays. All right. So let's pull out of this, now that we've shown off how cool that looks, and fly over to... Um, you should uh, at least let the animation finish. I'm sorry, but you're yeah. right. Anyway. It's very pretty. Um... We're going to pop over to the test map. We'll show off dark mode again on a darker map so you guys can see that. And then we'll, uh, we'll put this thing through our paces. Do, do, do. It's a loading screen. This is part of the stream normally. We're sorry if you're watching it on a video. But at the same time, you can probably just skip ahead a few seconds. Because it's on YouTube. The skip ahead things right, right down there. It's, it's the right arrow button on your keyboard. What? Yes! This works on basically every platform, including YouTube. You can just press the right arrow while you've got a window selected, and it'll just skip you ahead five or ten seconds. I am... You have taught me something new this day, Jed. And now you know? And knowing is half the battle. Mm -hmm. All right, let's show off dark mode real quick. And uh, this map, I'm just going to come over here so you mm. can see how cool it looks on a dark map. And so now that's basically an invisible ship. Mm -hmm. That's neat. All right, let me get some let me get some combat up in here and we can you can talk me through how this ship works. Uh, what would you like me to fight, Donnie? What kind of alien do you want me to fight? Oh, uh, I'm all about fighting some Klingons. Klingons? Got it. Uh, I will start at normal? No, no. Starting at normal. Uh, active combat center. I'm gonna start a basic combat encounter. Let's do basic combat one. And okay, see so how that goes. Probably wanna go in a dark bridge officer tray. Oh yeah. Why is that gone? Uh, because normally I put those powers on the tray, but I ran into technical difficulties before the build, before the stream started. If you select that and drag it to the right, okay. or or shift escape, you grab the edge like it's any other window that you would resize. Do I now? Yeah. And this there, works. Oh, there it is. Okay. That should do it. What have you done? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> hit the F12 button. Hitting F12. And it's showing... Uh, can you load the loadout? Can I load the loadout? Yes, yeah. can you tell me through that? Hit the U key. Okay. Go to the loadouts tab. Okay. Hit the button that says the loadout. Right there. Okay. Go to the stations tab on the ship. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, this is because we're on a QA shard. This is not working. No, no. This is an occasional bug that happens when you load characters. It, okay. If you switch to and from the ship, you will get your bridge officers back. Great. Let's do that. You're watching some dev magic live, guys. Oh, uh, what is it? It is. Uh, there we go. Before anyone thinks to try this, you can't. You, what? You, you told the window to reopen, so it closed. Was but it's, it wasn't open, was it? Oh, there it is. Yeah, it was, yeah, no, okay, it was. You're right. You're totally right. The USS. <laughs> there they all are. Okay. So this ship has bridge officer stations on it when we commission it. <laughs> well, let's start in dark mode, like you should. Yeah. I see you've set me up with a cannon build. I have. And it also has a torpedo on there. Neat. Let's get out of dark mode and start some shooting. So one of the 
really Jesus. helpful things for this ship. Welcome to a jet build, Donnie. Not, not that it's currently necessary, unless you fly past the target, is the swarm mode. Yeah. Because it has a number of in-combat effects in addition to Looking being real cool. really cool. Um, so while you're in this mode, your ship uh, has a little bit less hull and it's a bit more maneuverable. But Literally the, and stats-wise, it has a little bit less hull. Yeah, it was, that's why we did that. Um, yeah. But, and it's more maneuverable because you're trying to move less mass around. It's more more relative acceleration because your engines didn't go anywhere. Um, yeah. But the other thing that you might be able to tell from watching this is that you send out uh, a number of <coughs> ships from the swarm to just go ram into large ships. Mm -hmm. And you have uh, point defense that fly fires out of the swarm at nearby enemies. Oh, neat. And those will automatically target all the nearby like torpedoes and mines or anything dark else shooting in swarm you. mode. Yes. You... you they are mutually exclusive. That for makes very reasons. much sense, but also like tactical reasons that makes sense. Unfortunately, yeah. I got their attention, so maybe I'll just go back to swarm mode. That might be for the best. But okay, so swarm mode, a little less hull, a little bit better on other stats, um, and you get these point defense cannons that come flying out. Yeah. And if you Whoa, what those, torpedoes were those? That the just came spiraling out? things going yeah. off you. That is the ships from your swarm ramming things. Oh, neat. Yeah. Good job, guys. Kamikazes. Well, yeah. I guess they're drones. Yeah. So. I yeah. mean, technically on the show, I think this ship was a drone. Because, um, <laughs> you know. It, it might have been. I mean, there was enough of them on the show that I'm sure one of them had to be in that Yeah. Because there was only Leland doing, you know, all the control stuff. And I think for... Spoiler season is past, right? Like, I hope so. It's, it's a while ago. Because for some... We're in Picard show, land now. I'm pretty sure Leland was a drone. <laughs> That's very really true. Him. I think Leland was made of drones. He was 70, 700 billion drones wearing a trench coat. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, all right. So let's go into an intermediate combat encounter. So it seems the jet has built me a super good ship. Well, this is a good ship. What can I say? Yeah, it's a great ship. Okay. Yeah. Um. So does swarm mode last forever as long as you have it on? It's like a tactical mode that way? Swarm mode lasts until you feel like turning it, turning it off. Okay. Probably also until you die. If you die, I would not be surprised if it ends. It would be uh, somewhat surprising if it didn't. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, let's find out. Yes, it's on cooldown. So it has, in fact, died. Uh, uh, no, it's fine. We'll so just respawn. There is a slight delay after you uh, turn it off before you can turn it back on. Yes. And there's a slight delay after you turn it on before you can turn it back off. And there's a slight delay, as we learned earlier, after you... Oh, Johnny, can you just go wave your hand behind the green screen? Uh, there's a slight delay... That, yeah, you're going to have to stand up, unfortunately. Um, and actually, while you're up, can you turn on those two lights that I forgot to turn on? This is on the cable. Um, just do that one, actually, because I don't want you to pull your microphone out. Uh, yeah, so there's a delay after you exit Cloak before you can re-enter it. It's to, to make sure that the animations don't overlap, because I was told not to let them do that. <laughs> Everything will explode, y'all. Everything. It's... It's not that bad. I did make a push this button to crash instantly button earlier this week, and it is not. That why? Bad. Not why sure. would you? So I wasn't trying to. Uh huh. I discovered a thing. We. You shouldn't say what thing. I was going to ask you. I'll ask you after oh, this no, video. Oh no! It's I built a thing. It doesn't even. Yeah, yeah, but, but, but. The thing you built may suddenly become a thing. Uh, all right. So let's talk about a little bit about um, tactics while flying a ship like this. Um, obviously, I got blowed up a minute ago. Um, mm -hmm. What did I do wrong? Well, one of the things you're going to want to do in this ship is point your nose at the enemy if you're flying dual heavy cannons. Like yeah, that makes is. sense. Um, so if you do the thing you're currently doing where you fly past your target so you can't have most of your big weapons shooting at the target, that's bad. But how do I not... I have to go forward in space, Jet. You don't always... Fun fact. But then you get shot if you stop. Please tell me the theory of holding still somehow. So, here's... There's... <laughs> various ways of going about things. One of them is that flying backwards is a thing that I do, I think, more often than most people. Um, and... Switching between those can be helpful. One of the things you can do in a target-rich environment such as that one is just switch to a target that is farther away when you're about to run on top of your current one. Oh. One of the tactics to consider employing while flying the ship is figure out which one of those enemies is the one you have a secret mission to go defeat, and then <laughs> go kill that. 
Um, because for those of you not familiar with the Starship trait, while you're in combat, one of your nearby foes gets marked as secret mission, go take this out. And then when you do, um, that foe is, is less resistant to damage from you, and then when you do defeat it, you get a swarm of Section 31 ships to go fly around and shoot things. So where, how do you tell which enemy has been secret missioned? Well, if they survive for more than two seconds, it's easier, but they have a fairly obvious effect that plays on top Oh my god! <laughs> it will be harder to tell if you spawn the 50 ships at once. I, well, I didn't realize they would spawn on top of me. Yes, I do need to improve some of this map's fun. Yeah, I'm gonna die. So you see that? Okay. Because it cleaned up because the map died. Yeah. But and they, 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 they now despawn when you die, which is actually not how this map used to work, so that's a nice change. That, I put that change in a while ago. Yeah, well, maybe you haven't been on the stream in a while. <laughs> maybe, maybe I haven't. Or maybe you have, but we haven't ever gotten this far in like a month and a half. Uh, Alright, so... Sorry, you were in the middle of telling telling me something important. So, if you... A couple of uh, other disclaimers on um, how the secret mission works. It's not going to pick someone while you're cloaked. Okay. Because that would be cheating. Um, and it's not going to pick someone that you can't kill because it's unkillable for whatever reason. Because that would be rude. That's great. I appreciate both of those things that you yeah. thought of and made a thing. Also, I would like to clarify, it picks an enemy that you have to kill, it does not give you a secret mission to backstab your team. That's great. I appreciate that as well, even though that would be very thematic for Section 31. It would be kind of funny. Um, but so kind of funny is not how we design games. It's not, not always. Uh, if kind of funny is also good gameplay, then it can be. Yes. Um, so, mayhap you want to choose one of the earlier ones and not blow up everything. I might suggest the third one, because the final stage of it is going to be well, not a tactical cube, because I always leave this map at four. Cause this is... Yeah. Oh, unless you spawn unless them I spawn. You're still dead. And then um, they won't stay. Yeah. Okay. Really... Yeah, but... So anyway. I am, I am, uh, I gotta say, Jet, this is a Jet-built ship, and I've died three or four times. Uh, you might be slipping in your old age. Maybe I finally showed something that's slightly <laughs> difficult when you're dying because you need to get good. I don't know. My old... Yes, because you're the youngest, like one of the youngest people on the team. I think Weston is beating you for that that uh, that goal now. I'm not sure. I don't know. I know we have a programmer at the company who's younger than I am. Yeah. But anyway, so that yellow indicator right there that just appeared is your secret mission, and you have now killed him. Good okay. Job. Okay. So that thing that just popped yes, up on him, that ring. And that one there. Okay. So if, if you have one around you, it's it's not not that random. Got it. it, it Pick randomly from the set of one. Well, <laughs> I picked one. Yeah, it, then it'll pick that one. Oh, there's multiple waves in this. Yes. So That's what you were cement about the final me, phase. Me proving that I could do a thing was part of this map. Nice. Neat. So if you... Once you finish cleaning these up, you can mouse over the Starship trait and show off the stats on that. Yeah, let's do that. Um, and maybe we can look at a few... Uh, yeah. Uh, vanity shields and then wrap this bad boy up. Mm -hmm. uh, Alright, so mastery. So, here's our starship trait. There, there is a Klingon enemy that is about to spawn. What? It is, it is three stages of it. Okay. I see. <laughs> like, no, wait, no, wait, Mike, don't do that! <laughs> what were you gonna do? No, the, you know, going into a menu. Oh, yeah, of... yeah, yeah. Was, I mean, maybe it'd be kind of interesting to watch, but... But probably not. Yeah. Alright, let's fly backwards. As requested. Or it... And uh, one of the things about the secret mission trait is it doesn't actually matter if you kill the secret mission person, they just need to die. Oh, interesting. So if your teammates help you out and kill the person that they don't know is your secret mission, then, you know, good job. Mission accomplished anyway. Yeah. All right. Now we'll go and look at the trait. Yeah. All right. So this is the secret mission. Mm -hmm. Tell us about this, Chad. I know you just spent so, 20 minutes talking about it. like I've been saying, but... so while you're in combat, it's going to mark a nearby enemy, and the enemy has a damage resistance penalty to you, and then when you kill that enemy, or whenever they die through natural causes, <laughs> totally natural or whatever else, you get a, a drone ship that follows you. So there's the, the two-part benefit. There's the upfront, if, even if you're not paying attention, you're like, gravity well, and then the game's like, well, all of the foes are in the gravity well, so you pick something in the gravity well. Gravity's like, I'm punching you harder, because I know all the details, because we've got a secret agent aboard your ship. 
and then afterwards, <laughs> Section 31's like, good job, here's a form. Are you, wait, in this scenario, did Section 31 recruit Gravity itself as a secret agent? No, no, <laughs> the secret agent was on board the ship sabotaging its structural integrity. Oh, I see, okay. We're, gravity isn't the secret agent, I, I wouldn't put it past it. <laughs> yeah, that's a very good point. Alright, so which is the console for the ship? It's the far left engineering console. Far left engineering console, alright, so here's, here's Forge Turncoat, tell us about this one. So, this one, as I mentioned a moment ago about sending secret agents to take it over, mm -hmm. and this one, you click it and you send a stream of nanites at the target, and they um, take over the target and start shooting their former allies, and they do so a lot better than they were previously. So, uh, for the duration of the Confuse, they have a significant damage buff on it. Nice. So, you mm. can... The, it doesn't innately have any scaling based on what kind of foe you target, but I would caution that in general our dreadnought NPCs will have a higher confuse resistance than say our cruiser or frigate rank NPCs. That would make sense. So not as a property of this console but just it might not work against a attack cube for more than a second or two and you might get eight or nine seconds out of a board probe. I don't know. It's Okay. It's going to vary from enemy to enemy, but whoever they are, they're going to be acting exactly as their normal self, except they're shooting the other team. Neat. Which is neat. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. So the swarm mode, then, is not a console, but just a uh, mode that only works on this ship. The swarm mode is just a property that the ship comes with, like dark mode. Nice. It's just one of the special things the ship gets. All right, so before we go into um, showing off some vanity shields, just give me a quick talk through of the build you made for this ship and why it's a good build for the Section 31 Heavy Command Battlecruiser. So I put uh, seven, because I can count, uh, Section 31 phaser weapons on the ship because it's a Section 31 ship. Yep. And, and Section and 31 cannons weapons. Cannons sometimes important. Yeah. Uh, cannons are nice because the ship has a pretty good turret. You could also do beam rays on this pretty easily. Mm -hmm. But when I commissioned it, I put cannons on it, so I just replaced them with non Levelless cannons, yeah, really good ones. Um, a bunch of phaser tactical consoles because the Section Thirty One weapons are phaser weapons, and the wide angle quantum torpedo from the Gamma Reputation because I knew Mike wasn't going to keep his target. In the <laughs> like, All right, let's, let's get something. I just, that I works. just assumed you did a pass and then you came around for another pass. That, that's how it. Well, anyway. And uh, also having a torpedo plays nicely with the command seating that the ship has because mm. it lets you have a concentrate firepower but the intel seating has override subsystem safeties which might press zero times and is really nice for your energy weapons <laughs> um, and it's got other cool things you can do like intel team is kind of like combat cloak 2 electric boogaloo okay um, <laughs> there's uh, some other broadly useful uh, bridge officer abilities on there and um, a lot of the consoles are damage boosting consoles of various types like um, I'm not mentioning the dynamic power redistributor module because the last time I mentioned <laughs> it I was I'm going to say at least mildly misinterpreted but uh, that's on there because it's good at damaging things and, and we like effective. it and it's a good thing that we're not touching and also the zero point energy conduit which is probably out of favor, but I found it in about two seconds as I was setting the ship up, and it's not that bad, so I ran with it. <laughs> nice. I, I'm nice. not overly concerned about how that console is performing. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah the protomatter field projector is there to try and help keep Mike from dying, but he didn't press I didn't the button. I didn't see it. Yeah. So. Um, oh, it's down there. Yeah. And yeah, that's a, a lot of it. Um, then you can also go to the traits tab where you'll observe that I slotted no ground traits because that takes time and yes. we're flying ships in space. Yep, that's true. But I slotted uh, space traits that are good at um, either not dying as easily or killing things faster. <laughs> I'm sensing that's what a feet. lot of our traits do. Yep, yep. It's also a lot of combat. Either kill the enemy or be harder to kill. It's yeah. Summarize a lot of things in that way. That's um, true. And then, as is tradition, of course, the starship traits include the starship trait from this ship, and then four other ones that play well with it. Neat. All right. Yeah. Um, what was the name of the, the shield item again? It was... Um... I don't think it's an item. Uh, I think it's just a reward table. If you... No, you, you made an item that gives it to me. I promise you. Oh, well... Can I, can I type it in for a second? Well, I... not right now, no, because it's still frozen. Okay, well... Uh, let's see. I was... I'm not going to find it that way. Yeah. Oh, God. What is this? Why is this? 
Return to your game, Ark. Don't do this. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Dive in. Yep. This is why we can't run there commands like this on the live on the live server, guys, because this would freeze for all of you. Complete recently, and I love it so much. <laughs> so much. So you can see immediately there it's frozen with the form just stuck in position. Yep. There we go. All right, let's turn off swarm mode and throw th go through some vanity shields real quick. Yeah. I know it's not the perfect map for it, Donnie, but what? Why did That's you? So we haven't made any new vanity shields some. that would be in here, would we? Have we? Uh, I hope not. Okay. All right. So we're we'll just gonna pick a couple guys. Um, and I'm sorry, I can't take your request because we're not here, but. Ooh, well yeah, already, so the, Dyson the Dyson looks real good on this ship. Is, I really have liked that contrast. Cookies and cream. Yeah. It <laughs> is. It is. <laughs> a little bit it's of purple in there. It's a d dope Oreo. All right, swap them back. Uh, let's do, because of course, is, is this? No, it's the Liquidators. Where's the Titans? Here's the Titans, because the Titans looks good on everything. You, that's a vanity ship, Mike. You've got to put it in the visuals tab. It, it, it won't go to your shields because it doesn't have. I, yep, yep, yep. You, no, the things you said, the things you say, they make sense. Yeah. That's nice. And That's you can see cool. a little hint of what I was talking about there, where the. Yeah, the underneath. The... Well, with that in mind, let's get the pink one up in here. Yep. Yeah. Oh yes, that so looks great. And then <laughs> that looks you, really great. You want to activate swarm mode while this is on, just to yeah. show what that looks like, because. Wow. Oh, that's cool as heck! Holy crap. Yeah, because this is neat. That is that is super that, cool. That's great. All right, well, folks, it has been a pleasure having you both on the stream. Thanks, Thank Mike. you for joining me. Um, this ship uh, drops tomorrow, um, and we'll be in uh, for the very first time. We're doing this both duty officer and research and development packs at the same time. Uh, so purchase any of them for the next, I think, three weeks, and uh, you get a chance to get the ship. So. Um, we, uh, we hope you enjoyed the recorded stream and, uh, we will see you all next week. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.